you had a very interesting March 2020. Can you go over what happened during that time period? Started working for this company that was doing 15 million in sales a month selling vitamins. <laughs> I was managing their account. Airlines are down 90 to 95 percent from their all-time highs. I made an executive decision in like two and a half months, seven or eight X my investment Jeez. because I was buying so low that as it multiplied up, like my investment just popped off. We know it's manipulated, but that doesn't mean we can't ride the wave, you know? Absolutely. Welcome back to another episode on the Narrow Path Podcast. I am honored and humbled that you have decided to tune in to this very special episode that I have for you guys. On today's episode, I have a guest that's going to be speaking uh, with you guys here today. It is my pleasure to introduce Jason Horecki to the podcast. Jason is a graduate from the University of Florida where he studied business. He's an entrepreneur, an investor, a music producer, and an expert in the field of technical analysis where he coaches many others on how to read charts and make accurate entry and exit points. Welcome, Jason. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, very honored and excited to be here. So yeah, excited to get into it, man. For sure, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself, brother. Wow. Well, um, I mean, you basically hit it, hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, was born in South Florida, lived there through elementary school, moved to North Carolina uh, and was there from elementary school through high school. Uh, loved Asheville, North Carolina. I was up in the mountains, so spent a lot of time outside, outdoors. Uh, loved hiking, loved snowboarding, spending time with friends. Uh, and then, yeah, went to the University of Florida for college, for business, uh, and had a really cool minor in innovation. So that minor kind of pushed me to look for entrepreneurial paths to start businesses and right out of college I started my first business of selling products on Amazon so I basically jumped you know headfirst into the Amazon game and had no idea what I was doing and kind of just figured things out as I went and made a lot of mistakes and learned from those mistakes and built a six-figure Amazon store and then uh, obviously kept growing my entrepreneurial path, got into some masterminds and started learning how to invest. And then, you know, met up in uh, the Level Up Collective with Jeremy. So hopefully that was a nice little summary. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, brother. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, because you graduated from Florida with a business degree, was that what pushed you to be an entrepreneur? Um, not necessarily, honestly. I always had that in the back of my mind. Mm. Uh, both of my parents are entrepreneurs. Mm. And I've been grateful to be able to have them at home while I was growing up and kind of be a part of their business as I was growing up. Um, so they have a, a statue importing business where they create handmade statues in South America and ship them into the United States. Um, so even when I was young, I was helping them to pack and ship and go to shows like conventions. They would go to you know convention centers and have a little booth where they're selling their statues. And I would be there, you know, taking credit cards and <laughs> writing writing accounting stuff in the books and stuff like that. So I was always around them and and always appreciated that they were able to work from home and you know be around me and. Um, that's something I always, you know, aspired to be as well. Mm. Wow. So in regards to um, your mom having uh, that importing business, is do you think that pretty much being 
surrounded by you know kind of that environment it helped kind of cultivate that path for you yeah it's it's just something that i was around and something that came really naturally to me um that being said i have a an older sister that was also around the same business but she didn't really have the tendencies of wanting to pursue the path of entrepreneurship and she just wanted you know something stable and secure and she got that and and she's happy so you know to each their own i feel like everyone again like has their own path and this was mine yeah. yeah and i believe you have a lot of value to add to a lot of people because you have a very i would say unique perspective on life especially your upbringing having parents that are entrepreneurs being pretty much exposed to the business life at such a young age you were pretty much born to do this brother like it's like you said it's in your blood um and i wanted to highlight on something that you said in your introduction which was when you scaled the six figure you know e-commerce business on amazon how long had have you been doing uh, e- e-commerce for before you actually started seeing success and what was that like yeah so i believe i started around october august or september or october of 2018 okay um, was right when i graduated and immediately after i graduated i was like getting right to work and I was just full time uh, studying just YouTube videos, uh, buying courses and, and trying to, you know, learn different ways to sell on Amazon, uh, basically just like, give myself all the, the inputs and all the information that was needed to at least just get started and, and get my foot in the door. Um, and that whole idea came from a class that I took in college. Uh, so I had a whole class that was talking about what the retail industry is doing now because of online sales. Mm. So like structuring their stores in a specific way to get people to stay in their stores longer, you know, trying to like avoid people coming in and window shopping and then leaving, you know, and I had a whole class on this Mm. and there was a statistic in that class that the professor wrote up on the whiteboard um, talking about Amazon. And talking about how 80% of all United States households have an Amazon Prime account. Mm. And when I heard that statistic, and this was 2018 or 2017, I was like a light bulb, light bulb just went off of like, okay, Amazon's here to stay. And this is a skill set that I can learn. And, you know, other people are doing it. I can do it. And again, just kind of dove deep into it. So um, my first my first product were were actually my parents' statues. Okay. So that was like the the path of least resistance for me. It was just like my parents have all these statues in their garage. They literally import them and have stacks and rows and uh, shelves full of these statues in their garage that they're just waiting for orders to come in to pack and ship them out. So I was like, perfect. I got all my product here in the house. I like made a deal with my parents of like, hey, give me a a percentage cut of these sales or like, you know, I would pay for the the statue from them and, you know, make sure that I was like helping them out as well. Um, That was like a big reason of why I wanted to do it was like, I'll help you grow an online, uh, you know, stream that you never had before. So I basically picked, you know, the best selling product that they had took pictures, you know, professional pictures of them, made the Amazon listings for them, and then shipped them out to Amazon's fulfillment centers and kind of just crossed my fingers and was like, hope this this works and hope I don't lose my parents a bunch of money. Um, And thankfully, it was such like, it's such a random like niche, uh, religious, it was religious statues. So Mm. thankfully, it wasn't and still really isn't um, a saturated market online. Um, so sales started to come in and I started, you know, showing my parents like, Hey, look, you know, make it a couple of thousand dollars, you know, right out of college. And I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I didn't know that this was like possible. And that got me to uh, dive deeper into it. Right. So I didn't stop. I was like, okay, this is one, you know, product that I can sell. And how do I sell other things? Mm-hmm. So that's when I kept diving deeper and I would, you know, reinvest the money that I, um, that I started making. And I was also 
honestly, I also started to drive Uber. I was like drive doing Uber Eats to like make my first money to like reinvest into Amazon products. Um, Cause I just saw that that was like a nice easy way to like make some extra cash and then use that extra cash to flip it into products. So. Hey, my dog was um, hustling. <laughs> I was hustling. I was hustling. Whatever, you know, however I could do it, I, I was like, I got to make it work. So mm -hmm. uh, that was when I started to learn a specific method of selling on Amazon, which is called wholesale, mm -hmm. uh, where you're buying products from suppliers in the United States that have those products already listed on Amazon. So I'm basically like making a connection and asking these suppliers, hey, am I allowed to resell these products on Amazon? with you guys and i know like just for people listening in um if you're looking at an amazon page you see you know the buy now which is like the buy box where you can just click buy now but below there's you know other sellers selling the product mm. so i would just be another seller selling the product where as people sold or people sold out then i would eventually make my way up into that uh upper box where people just press buy now and then i would be the one making that commission that's crazy so in in regards to whenever you're selling these products for like let's say just like another company right w would you have to advertise that you were selling it or like how would kind of you get the product to the the um the buyer yeah, so that was something that I was a little surprised to learn is that a lot of these suppliers, they have warehouses filled with product. Mm -hmm. They just have, you know, thousands of products laying around and all they want to do is move the product. Mm. So I tell them, I call them on the phone and I'm like, hey, I'll order 100 units a month or I'll place an order right now of 300 units. Is that cool? Like. Would that, would that help you out? Right. So just buying the product from them and then emailing them shipping labels to ship their product to Amazon for me, they were making money. Hell. So I didn't even need to do any marketing. I never ran ads. I never like none of that because it was all organic traffic. So gotcha. just to touch on that a little bit, there's a lot of like third party plugins on Amazon like that Amazon sellers use that you can actually like click this one button and it'll tell you like how many sales a month this one product is doing. So you can kind of do some math of like if there's a couple, let's say there's five sellers on the listing and I'm the sixth one, you know, then I can kind of divide that up and see how many average sales a month I'll get. And then as I became consistent with it, um, you know, it, it just became a reordering process of like, knowing when to reorder when I was running low and just calling and making sure they had product in stock and then sending it back in. And I remember we had a conversation too about how you pretty much had a social media to go on top of you doing e-commerce. Do you think that you having social media had an effect on your success with you know, sales in regards to your e-commerce business or, or was it kind of just all because of you know, using using their organic traffic and just the knowledge that you've accumulated throughout that to kind of garner you to break six figures within you know, your um your your e commerce business. Yeah. So, um, good question. I think that it definitely pushed my entrepreneurial journey forward mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of opportunities opened up after I put myself online. Um, I mainly created the online presence that I had for myself for my business page uh, just to give out free info and be a valuable resource, but also to open the opportunity to do coaching. Um, I learned pretty quickly that I have a, a good talent to or in kind of like explaining things that are difficult in an easy way. So once I like realized that I could do that, I was like, okay. I can make an extra, you know, side income teaching others to do what I'm doing. Again, if I could do it, others can do it. And it's funny um, because I started posting my my wins and my success and and my story. Um, I actually had a big business, a multi million dollar business, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Really? <laughs> I had I had so many messages on LinkedIn, like my 
LinkedIn messages were just flooded of like, hey, you're an Amazon seller, use this product or, you know, use this, oh, or use us. And I was so tired of getting those messages that like one came in one day and I was like, no, no, I don't need your services. I'm good. And they responded back like, no, 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 we're actually like looking to hire you. Mm. Like I literally like turned them down <laughs> because I thought it was just another ad or another like promotion or something. Yeah. And they were like pretty close to me in South Florida at the time. Um, and I went in and I talked to these guys and um, they basically had a monopoly on all of the biggest vitamin brands on Amazon. They were the only seller of all of these huge vitamin brands. So if you type in vitamins, their company was selling all of the ones on the first page. Mm. And they basically said, like, we're looking for people that know how to use Amazon, that are Amazon sellers that can come in and help us to manage our store. And they basically allowed me to continue running my business on the side. So that was like a big thing. I was like, Hey, I've got this business that I'm running and you know, it's going well. And they said, okay, yeah, no worries. You know, if you're able to do that, you know, semi passively, it was just sending some emails and phone calls really to like run this business. Um, they were like, you can come in and, and work for us. So I got hired and started working for this company that was doing 15 million in sales a month selling vitamins. <laughs> I was managing their account. What? And that like really like sharpened my skill set mm -hmm. um, with Amazon selling. And there's so many little intricacies and nuances that you need to know to like operate at that highest level. Um, and yeah, I worked for them for about a year and a half. And um, things, I guess, kind of fell apart when they weren't treating me as well as I thought they would. Mm. Uh, because I was the only, besides my manager, I was the only other person in that building that had their own Amazon store. So I thought they would use me more to like help them think of new ideas and new ways to grow. And they kind of overworked me. I was working long hours, like overtime without extra pay, working weekends. Um, and I was like calculating like what I was getting paid and it was like $10 an hour after all of the hours that I was working. Wow. Um, it's like, is that really like what my time is worth? Mm. Um, and that's when I started to look for new opportunities and new ventures and, and stuff like that from there. Mm. And was this before or after you had already broken si that six figure mark? It doing was your, after. It was after. So yeah. it's like you kind of made this breakthrough and making all this money and then you get hired by this company and they're like well my time isn't worth this so you kind of already realized that at that time period so it's crazy the amount of opportunity social media can bring but also the level of distraction that it can bring us I mean for you I think it brought to you a whole load of experiences which is definitely you know it wasn't for nothing but I think with social media, it does bring a lot of opportunities as well as distraction. It just depends on the type of intention that we give it. Right. And you and I, we're, we're pretty much in the same community. That's how I met, you know, that's how I met Jason for the ones that are watching. Um, you're a believer in the power of mentorship and community. I mean, you coach many others in regards to investing can you tell us how much of an impact that that's had in your entrepreneurial journey? Just kind of giving, giving value back. Is that what you mean? Just being in a pretty much a mastermind. Cause I feel like a lot of people, including myself, I slept on it, bro. Like I, when I started my entrepreneurial journey, it was because I got into the door to door sales industry mm. and I was like, yep, I'm finna just make heck of money and just like try to work my way through read books. But then, it I kind of hit a breaking point like like a, a limit and it wasn't until I joined a mastermind and got together with a whole bunch of you know entrepreneurs that were also on their on their journey that I could see like there was more than just beyond this limit like there's more potential so that's pretty much my experience with it but I wanted to kind of ask how much of an impact that it's made on your journey and 
what that was like being in a community you know and and being mentored and being a mentor yeah so my first mastermind that i joined was in 2019. so once i started seeing money coming in i was very quick to just realize like i gotta look for mentors i gotta look for advice uh, on anything i was just looking to level up really and uh the first ma- the first mastermind that i ended up joining was called social x mm-hmm. uh, we, we spoke about it a little bit before and i'll just kind of give a quick a, a quick um summary of what it was but It was a Zoom mastermind where these people brought in successful multimillionaires from different walks of life. So some Facebook ad experts, real estate, um, gym, you know, personal trainers, um, investors, all different types of people. So it was cool to see that, you know, every week there was someone new that we were learning from. And I very quickly picked up on the fact that everyone's story was the same. Mm. Literally every single millionaire that came through, if it was a, you know, life coach, just, you know, someone that just wanted to like be on, you know, head talks and, you know, his story was the same as the real estate guy. You know, they had a, a tough upbringing. They pushed through, you know, their problems and, you know, any distractions or any, blockages that came up they worked through them they got through them and they were just persistent and obsessed with with their line of work and you know it was really inspiring to to see and to hear you know all of these people but uh it was pretty clear to me like what i needed to do i i saw pretty clearly like what i needed to do which was to have a laser focus on where I wanted to be and who I wanted to become and to learn, you know, from the best possible person that could could basically take me to where I want to get to. Um, Real quick, how did you kind of cultivate like that, that mindset of like who you wanted to become pretty much? Because I think having laser focus is, is really good, but not a lot of people kn- know where to kind of put that focus into so at that time period did you know like the type of person that you wanted to become like who you wanted to embody i think that to be honest i didn't Mm, but i knew that i at least needed to take what i was learning from this mastermind of action steps of organizing my life you know getting on a good routine taking time to learn and to read every day, just little things like that, that I knew that would push me in the right direction. Um, And again, it it wasn't really until um, I joined my next mastermind that I really started to get into my purpose and get into, you know, what I really feel like, you know, I'm here to do. Um, And again, you know, that mastermind introduced me to Jeremy, who uh, created the Level Up Collective that we met in. So he was just another member in that Social X mastermind. And like I told you when we were talking recently, you know, he just stood out to me as someone that asked the best possible questions uh, to these millionaires on these Zoom calls. Uh, and it just like really caught my eye of like, OK, this guy, you know, is really high level and he he's like really trying to ask these like really high level questions. Uh, I want to like get to know him better. and. When I followed his page, I saw that he was a coach and coaching other people and in business and coaching uh, like fitness people as well. Mm. And I just knew that he had knowledge that I could learn from. And literally like a month later, he dropped his own mastermind that was just like for entrepreneurs wanting to improve on their habits, on sleep hacks, on uh, getting more energy in the day, like some fitness stuff, some supplement stuff. And I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I was, just, <laughs> you know, let's try it out. You know, I'm here for it. I want to learn from this guy and you know, the rest was history. Yeah. Shout out to Jeremy Griffin, man. In regards to the community that we're both in right now, which is the level up collective. Um, you're one of the leaders in the community and you know that's kind of 
how I met you. Uh, it was you host these investing calls every week, and I feel like the it, it's crazy how just one individual can bring together so many talented individuals, and it, it just becomes like a, a like, almost like a network or a, a or a ripple effect of all these different talent coming in their unique gifts and that's pretty much why i brought jason along is because when i met jason on the group calls he was always so quick to give value like just 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 straight up like any questions that you have in regards to investing in regards to emotional intelligence he was like i'm here for you you know what i mean so i kind of i felt that energy and it resonated with me because when i started this youtube channel it was all about showing younger people and even like older people like that there's another way like there's another way to live this life it doesn't just have to be the the, the you know what i'm saying the nine to five the the matrix the rat race like it just it doesn't have to be just that in regards to when we last talked you had a very interesting march 2020 can you go over what happened during that time period i'm pretty sure uh there's a lot of um, nuance to this conversation, but I wanted to kind of uh, introduce a different perspective, especially from someone who had such a huge success with making money online to how the whole pandemic was like for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, March of 2020. Um, so just to like give some context, I joined the Level Up Collective with Jeremy in mm -hmm. January of 2020. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of months was literally like taking supplements, you know, getting your sleep dialed in, you know, some fitness tips, some consciousness stuff, uh, just like entrepreneurial uh, beneficial tips, I guess. And there was nothing on investing yet in his program or in his course, um, in his teachings. Um, and in March of 2020, obviously the pandemic started to hit, uh, people were really scared, businesses were closing down. I was working uh, that Amazon job uh, where we basically had to work from home, even though when I got hired, they were like, there's no way you can work from home, you got to work in the office. And then the pandemic hits and they're like, all right, everyone go home, work from home. Um, and jeremy hosted a an emergency investing call so it was like mandatory you had to be on it um you know he was making it a, a very serious point of like this is a serious time that you know we got to get serious and there's huge opportunity here and at the time um i dabbled in in some investments um previously um where I actually bought one Bitcoin in 2015 mm. uh, because my me and my buddies wanted to buy a fake ID from China. And that's the only currency they took because they wanted to be anonymous with their fake IDs. <laughs> uh, so I bought one for $200 and then like a week later it gets taken away by a bouncer. But that transaction, the fact that I was able to send money to someone in China and get something in return, uh, really stuck with me. So I started getting interested in cryptocurrency and like kind of learning about it. And um, especially after 2017, when I was watching it go from $200 up to $20,000, I was like, okay, this is serious. Mm. Uh, and in 2018, I started investing into some cryptocurrencies when they were all down bad, like they were all at the lowest lows. Uh, and, you know, I sometimes I look back in my transactions and see I was, you know, buying Ethereum at like 30 bucks, like 20 bucks and like trying to make like quick little flips, like trying to day trade and like and I ended up losing all my money, like day trading and like trying to like get money quick. I was like, oh, the currency is like moved so fast. So like I'm going to become rich with it. Mm. That was like my mentality. Uh, but like what I didn't understand was like investing is a long term game. If you see value in something, then you got to have the patience and and, you know, just like the intelligence to not be silly with your investments and know like if this is going to be worth more in the future, then just stack it up. 
Uh, but obviously I didn't know better at the time. I had no investing teachers or anything. I was all on my own. My charts looked like madness, like so many lines and indicators all over the place. Like there's no way anyone could have known what was going on uh, when looking at my charts at the time. I had like a little chip on my shoulder from in, for that type of investing. Mm. I thought like it wasn't possible to make money. I thought like, oh, like anyone that does this is just like baking it and they don't know, like it's impossible to make money. So that was kind of my mentality coming into the Level Up Collective. And Jeremy had this like emergency call uh, where he laid it out very simple. And um, I'm grateful, like this was like a huge pivot in my life where he basically just laid it out like airlines are down 90 to 95 percent from their all time highs. And he basically just said, like, if you believe that airlines are going to come back and that flights are going to resume at some point in the future, then this is going to be an amazing buying opportunity. And at the time, you know, there was a lot of info going around and we didn't really know like how deadly it was or if it was the flu or, you know, all that stuff, you know, every, there was just a lot of noise and Jeremy just made it really easy for me to make a decision of where to put my money and where to dump my money. He basically just said, if you have any available cash that is sitting in the bank or that you have able to invest, you know, this is your time. Uh, and he, he played it with just airlines and cruise stocks were the two that he, that he chose. I made an executive decision to go against what my brain was telling me, which is do not do it. Everyone's saying this is going to go lower. The world is ending, like everything's shutting down. This is like not like this is like the apocalypse. And I just like was like, you know, this is my time, you know, like this is this is a big moment of like how much lower could this go? The stock was like five dollars. Oh, like I was like, OK. Um, Let's throw some money in there and see what happens. Uh, so I just bought stock at the time. I didn't even know about options. I just bought the stock, um, bought a large amount. And in a couple of months, multiplied it. Uh, I think I like seven or eight X my my income, my my investment um, in like two and a half months. Uh, just because I was buying so low that as it multiplied up, like my investment just popped off um, and like airline stocks don't really move like crazy either. I could have, you know, bought some tech stocks and had an even crazier return. But to me, it was just the the logic behind that investment just made the most sense. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I can only imagine seven or eight X in your portfolio in a matter of two months. So was that pretty much the start of your investing journey was that mar that kind of that january to march time period of 2020 yeah that was that was really the first time that like it clicked mm -hmm. of just like <clears throat> this was just a smart move to make mm -hmm. and anyone that was not scared and not pulling out their money and trying to hoard cash the people that were investing when their gut was telling them, you know, to not do it. Those are the people that, you know, made millions mm -hmm. um, from 2020 crash, because after that crash, we went on the biggest bull market that we've ever had in history, mm -hmm. you know? And I know people that as that bull market was starting, they kept saying like, no, this is not real. We're, the economy is terrible. We're going to keep going down and everything just kept going up, up, up. Uh, so it just showed me a lot that year, like really taught me a lot. And especially being in the market, watching these charts, you know, watching the price movement and paying attention to it, like just really like got me to start understanding like the game. Mm. So it's like, we know it's manipulated, but that doesn't mean we can't ride the wave, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And so with that pretty much success, I'm pretty sure you had a ton of success with investing during that time period but something happened during that time period that caused you to pretty much lose everything can you tell us about that experience yeah absolutely um so obviously i'm still new to investing at this point 
And seeing those type of gains, seeing those type of returns uh, so fast, um, I think it's not healthy, to be honest, uh, especially <laughs> when you're new. Um, you, I, I, We were kind of talking about this, like it felt like it was like a little video game. It felt like I had like a, a video game app on my phone of just yeah. like fake money and you know the number just kept going up and I was like okay like this is piece of cake this is easy and I got humbled real quick and I you know saw this was like the first time that I realized like how important emotional intelligence is mm -hmm. when investing like if you don't if you're not like sharp if your mind isn't there and you're thinking about all these other things and you know maybe you have other things going on in your life like you're not going to be making good investment decisions so one the emotional intelligence and then two setting a plan i didn't really have a plan i didn't have a plan of when i was going to sell that investment i was just kind of like soaking in the feeling of like seeing more money come into my account in like the shortest amount of time so obviously greed started to play a part in my life and I'm sure anyone that has invested in, and made good money investing has felt that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty normal for, for humans to feel that and you know to start kind of like creating these scenarios in your mind of like oh if this goes to this price then I'm going to have this much money in my account and then I can buy all of these things with that or then I can retire or then I could live my dream life um, and I realized you know, all of that comes from a place of lack. Mm. And it all comes from a place of like, you feel like you don't have that already. And hitting $100,000 in your portfolio is going to change, you know, solve all your problems and it's just going to make your problems more relevant. Um, so going back to the story, my account was, was going crazy, number was going up, um, getting, you know, very excited and thinking about, you know, my next big purchase. Uh, I really wanted to buy a Tesla. That was like in my mind. I was like, oh, I'm just going to buy a Tesla in cash. And I'm just going to like go go to a dealership with cash and just <laughs> drop the cash on the counter and buy a Tesla. Like that's what was going on going on in my mind. I was like, I'm just going to like prove it to everyone that I'm like falling out and like buy myself a Tesla. And uh, a friend of mine um, at the time was also investing and also we were kind of chatting pretty frequently about what we were getting into and what we were buying and how our investment journey was going. And a friend of mine recommended me um, a company that just, it was basically like a penny stock. Mm -hmm. so it was worth pennies and went from pennies to $11 in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of hype around this stock. Um, I didn't know anything much about it. And, you know, I made some mistakes of over investing into something that I had no idea what I was getting myself into um, and also invested using a more advanced technique which is options uh, where you give yourself a time frame to basically bet if the stock is going to be above or below a certain price so the, the stock shot up to like $11 and then it came down to like $5 and you know, I had outside influences telling me, oh, it's going back up. It's going to 20 next. And I was just thinking in my head, okay, if I put all my money into this at five and it goes to 20, you know, then I'll have, you know, $400,000 in my account, you know, or whatever. I was just like dreaming about how big I could grow my account. Uh, and immediately right after I buy and I, you know, put most of my account into that position, um it just starts coming down more and i keep adding more to it and i'm like okay it's now it's at three now it's got to go from three to 20. now i'm gonna make this much money and then the next week it's like two um and basically i did such a short time frame where i was like it's gonna be at ten dollars or above in you know two weeks that those two weeks flew by the stock just went down and that whole entire amount went to zero and that was basically a big like rock bottom in my life. I felt like that was like something I worked so hard for. I mean, even though I just, you know, clicked a few buttons, mm -hmm. like that was someone's, you know, yearly income that I basically just threw away because I got greedy. Mm -hmm. 
And that was definitely a, a really low point in my life. And I felt like kind of giving up and, and, you know, feeling like, oh, this is not for me. And, you know, feeling all those thoughts and, you know, slowly, slowly worked myself way, like worked myself back to realizing that, you know, I was just one decision away from multiplying my money. Mm -hmm. If I like accidentally click that I was going to buy or that I was going to bet that it was going to go down instead of up, mm -hmm. I would have multiplied that amount of money and made a ton of money. Right. So that was kind of what was going through my head after I was like, it was just one decision. You know, there was something on the chart that I missed. And that's what started my like obsession with charting mm -hmm. and just like testing and practicing and trying all these different strategies to see like, what did I miss? And now if I look at that same chart, you know, now with fresh eyes, it's like, it was so obvious that it was just a pump and dump. Like it was so clear. But at the time, again, I just didn't have the experience and like the, the ability to see, you know, I, I don't, I didn't know what I was looking at. I like to, I like to like kind of frame it in like sports terms, like basketball. Like if someone that's never played basketball before steps on a court, they're not going to know how to shoot. They're not going to know plays. They're not going to know how to set a screen. Right. They're not going to know about, you know, double dribbles or fouls or anything. Maybe you step on a court and you shoot the the half court shot and you make it and you're like, oh, it's so easy. Yeah. Right. That's kind of what it felt. And then I got thrown into an NBA game and just was absolutely like demoralized. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I slowly, slowly started adding back to my account. Obviously I was still working other jobs and still making money with my e-commerce store. So it wasn't like my entire life was like actually in shambles, but like it was, I, I took a big hit. Um, and so it took a lot for me to, you know, get up off the floor and brush myself off and, and get back into it. And, um, that really humbled me. And I think that the market has a way of, of humbling people that get too greedy or feel like it's too easy and feel like, you know, that they, that they know it all. Mm -hmm. And that's like really what it taught me is like, I know nothing. Yeah. When we first talked about this, I remember thinking in my head, when you told me this, that there's a lot of value in knowing somebody's success but i think the real gems lie within the mistakes that they made to get to where they're at i, I remember you telling me too that that painful rock bottom is what actually kick-started your actual investing journey what what kind of led you to want to go from just doing it yourself just learning the charts and you know after taking a big loss like that what kind of led you to want to lead others in regards to investing so like i said I, I literally got so obsessed with looking at these charts like it, anyone that was like in my life during that time period 2020 2021 like anyone that was in my vicinity saw that like i had these charts up 24 7 on my phone on my computer literally just studying practicing and like literally like what i was just saying before of like trying to figure out what what did i miss like just that question, like, what did I miss to think that this stock was going to keep going up? And that led me to, you know, YouTube videos, just, you know, courses, books, same thing with my Amazon journey that, you know, we've talked about like YouTube university, Yeah. so much value on YouTube that people just put out there for free that. I just watched, you know, tons of free courses, free videos and, and started learning, you know, started kind of piecing all the puzzle pieces together to get to a point where I kind of took it on my own path of kind of teaching and, and coaching myself through, you know, paper trading, which is basically like practicing trading with fake money mm -hmm. um, and then starting with a smaller account size and hanging around with five dollars in my account. And it's like would I really care if I lose this $5? And it's like, no, I really don't. So let's practice some different techniques and see if I can see some consistency. And then that consistency led to me stepping into, you know, my power and kind of embodying like, okay, like I'm seeing consistent success with these strategies. And I started just sharing them in the mastermind. Um, and I, the people that are in the mastermind, like have seen my posts where I'll, you know, share, 
like, hey, this is what I'm getting into. This is why. This is, you know, my risk tolerance. This is my position size. Like, get it out. And I'm just like, hey, this is what I'm getting into. And a lot of people have followed me on these call outs um, and made really good money. Mm. Um, and I think that it wasn't it wasn't about me wanting to teach. It was more so people asking for it. The the people said that they wanted you know time with me they wanted to learn from me you know they wanted to see what strategies and you know indicators or techniques that i was doing and i you know again i was there to serve and kind of took that mentality of like maybe i can help someone out and maybe i, I can give that knowledge that they need to to not make a mistake that i made in the past that's pretty much the i would say the the hero's journey in a nutshell right there <laughs> What was kind of like the shift in your life? Was it that that people were just asking for you to help them out that kind of wanted you to go all in with investing and helping others to achieve their financial goals? Or was it you know, something deeper? So at the time, I was also uh, presented with an opportunity to teach in another you know, similar mastermind group. Um, and that was really the first time that I stepped into that power and stepped into that role where I really like realized that I had to be very careful with what I shared mm -hmm. and I couldn't just you know throw some things out if I was like kind of sure if you know that was the right move to make because I'm just like you you know I'm making these personal connections with people I'm you know learning about their lives and like I want to benefit their lives I don't want to make them make a silly mistake and, and lose their hard earned money that they, they worked hard for. So uh, for about six to eight months, um, I stepped into this leadership role. Um, that really helped me to embody everything that I was putting myself through. Um, and I, again, I just think it's part of part of the journey part of the path that I was on to start teaching in this other program while I was still honing my skills and learning how to teach in a way that people could actually take action steps from. Yeah. And not just like share my wins and share how everything's going over here and like not really help. Um, so yeah, I like built out a program, like my own course, my own program for that group. And then I was also coaching uh, one or two times a week and yeah that just really helped me to embody everything that i was was learning and that i was teaching uh, i feel like just being a teacher is the best way to really learn something uh, and really like embody those teachings so um, i credit that a lot to the investor that i am today um and i think other people in the level up collective and jeremy's group started seeing me step into that role and you know I was sharing some uh Instagram stories that people would tag me in you know sharing my charts and things like that um and they you know started asking me to do one-on-ones they started asking me for tips and tricks they started asking me hey when when are you getting in your next position you know <laughs> they started you know, ask like hey let's get into a trade together um and that's when that's when people in, in the level up collective started asking me to just hop on a Zoom call. They were like, hey, like we'd love if you could just get on a Zoom call and have a, an open call that if people want to learn more that they have you or have me as a resource. So yeah, it's been it's been a, a super cool journey. And yeah, it's just it's just helped me to really improve fast. Um, I like can't believe where I'm at in let's just say since 2020 till till now, you know, three years. Um, I feel like I'm light years ahead of where I was at and I'll never, I'll never let someone else manage my money. It's like, I have that like inside of me that like, I'm the best that I can give, you know? And it's like, that's it. You know, why would I, why would I give my money to someone that gets me 5% a year? You know, <laughs> Hashtag like, hedge funds. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why would I do that? Why would I waste my time with that when I could just do it myself? Yeah, that's that's quantum leaps for you right there. Yeah. I really resonate with what you said in regards to being really careful with what you say or tell somebody else. Um, 
and I say this because for you know the content that I put out there in regards to my viewers, I have to be what I say. I can't just tell them one thing and then like behind the scenes I'm doing another thing. Right. Like that would be, you know, that would be harmful to not just myself but to them. Like the energy that I put out. So I can only imagine what it's like to, you know, give someone advice on certain investing strategies and maybe if you weren't too sure like they end up losing money and now they're like looking at you like bro you know what i mean so it you hold a lot of responsibility and that responsibility dramatically pushes you to level up in and out of itself like it's it's crazy the amount of growth that you can accumulate just by being in the position of holding responsibility so w with that being said what's you know, one thing you would tell the audience right now in regards to how they can level up their investing game. Hmm. So I'll give like a quick story about um, this other group that I was a part of um, that another coach or let's just say another coach in the program um, was trying to teach people, trying to teach the students to make money quick. And it resonated with me that it, it was the same feeling that got me into trouble in 2020 of like, oh, I just want to get that Tesla. I want to hit, you know, yeah. multiple six figures in my account because I felt like it was coming from a place of lack. Mm. And once that started, once that started happening, that he was trying to teach people to day trade and, and just be in and out on the markets, looking at the one minute chart. Like I just saw it was like irresponsible and it's not, that's not the type of investing that resonated with me. And that's when uh, we started, you know, separating our ways and I left the group and, you know, went back to the level up collective and was just in there full time. Um, so yeah, that, that would be my advice is like, take it slow. I guess like it's easy to see from other people and it's easy to, to go on Twitter and on YouTube and see people that are, you know, multimillionaires with investing and you think that it's like super easy to do. Um, and I like to also give an analogy of like a doctor, right? To like become a doctor, to become a, a surgeon, you got to go to four years of school, then you got to do four years of grad school, then you got to do four years of internships and residencies. You're practicing nonstop at this skill that gets you this job that gives you six figure income. Right. And it's like, how many years did you have to put in and all that dedicated time and all the textbooks and all the studying you had to do to get that salary? So, like, don't think that that's going to come right away. A lot of people start coming from this place of lack when they start yes. investing of like, I don't have the money and I'll never have that. And they'll make mistakes to self-sabotage themselves to lose it all because they want things quickly. You know, they want that instant gratification. So one, I would just say, you know, take things slow, um, you know, baby steps, you know, get in the, get in the go-kart first and learn how to drive before you get into the NASCAR or the F1, you know, going through 250 miles an hour. Cause some people, they try to go too fast, too quickly and, and they make mistakes. And that's literally what happened to me. I tried to go too fast, too quickly before I knew the fundamentals, you know, before I knew how to shoot a basketball. I was trying to get signed to the NBA, right? So definitely, you know, take things slowly. And, you know, second, I would just have to say, like, find find someone that's doing it. Find a mentor or, or you know, find someone you trust to kind of guide you through the process and, you know, hold your hand along the way. And it's tough. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And that's also, you know, part of why I think it's so rewarding to teach and share what I've learned um, to help people, you know, to level up and to improve as fast as possible. There was something that stood out to me about what you were saying, which was coming from a place of lack. I believe that, you know, that ties into pretty much these personal problems that we have in, in our lives, you know, I mean, in our personal lives that can reflect in our business or our investing journey. And recently you've had some inner work that you've been doing so what what caused you to want to look deep inside and and heal from you know certain traumas that you might have 
carried up until you know your healing session sure. what, what kind of pushed you to heal from that even before i started my amazon business um i don't even know where i heard the quote but maybe it was a youtube video or something but or a book basically stating that your business is a direct reflection of yourself mm. and any problems that you see in your business they're happening in other areas of your life so that really resonated with me and i worked through a lot of stuff building my amazon store that again these traumas these limiting beliefs uh would would show up and you know i wouldn't really know what to do when i was first starting my business and i would let it affect me and i would let it pull me down um and those same limiting beliefs were still in play when i started making all that money again which allowed me to self sabotage myself and and make stupid decisions silly decisions um to get me back to feel comfortable right if my state my resting state was in a state of lack that's where my subconscious wants me to get back to mm -hmm. um and i do want to like give my flowers to jeremy because being in that mastermind and being around all these like high income earners um and just high level people i think just being in close vicinity to these high income earners you just start like soaking in this knowledge and before you know it it's just part of who you are yeah uh and just yeah being around jeremy obviously he had some incredible master classes and um incredible videos in his course and his program that started to get me out of that and started to show me that all of these limiting beliefs were one just you know traumatic events from our childhood or two stories that we told ourselves, you know, that we believed are true when in reality we're limitless beings. You know, so we're just placing all those limits on ourselves. I think healing is a journey that it's never done. I think there's always work to be done in that field. Facts. Um but I I definitely resonated with and uh, Mark's talking about this uh, breathwork event that I went to. Um, I definitely resonated with this event because as a man, uh, I feel like a lot of men repress a lot of emotions and repress a lot of traumatic events that have happened in their life. Um, where, you know, I had a dad that, you know, told me not to, not to cry, not to show my feelings, you know, be a man, suck it up. A lot of men, you know, will resonate with that. Um, and I saw this uh, healing breathwork event that basically allowed you to tap into those deep-rooted traumas and, and deep-rooted emotions and kind of work through them. And again, you know, I saw it as a way to improve upon myself or my business. I saw it as a way to heal myself to be a better teacher, to be a better coach. The event was incredible. The um, healing and the, the feeling that I got from it uh, was like a lot of forgiveness for myself, a lot of forgiveness for my family, uh, for my friends, for anyone that's, you know, did me wrong over the years. And, you know, realizing that everyone is just, you know, their inner child, you know, all, all of our parents are just unhealed inner child adults. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't know what's going on. They they never knew what was going on when they were raising you. And um, you gotta you gotta forgive. You know, you gotta forgive them for for everything. No, not hold on to any uh, resentments. Yeah, because that that negative energy can can attach itself onto you, and it can bleed into the way you run your business or the way you make investing decisions. It's like if you were carrying like this energy of like hate towards the fact that your dad was cheap you know you know had terrible money issues and you were holding on to that whenever you were wanting to make an investing decision that was going to be that was going to make or break what was going to happen with that you know the outcome of that decision you told me once that one decision can mess up everything if you haven't worked on your emotional intelligence and i believe that plays into 
how much we've gone into healing ourselves the inner work that we've done and you know i i resonate with that too because being in the level up collective i uncovered some aspects of myself that i didn't even know existed like money problems i didn't even know i didn't even know we could have a relationship with money everything is spiritual i knew that for a fact but i didn't know that we could have a spiritual money relationship and based on how we grew up or how our ancestors lived we can carry some of their trauma and i remember being in a point in my life where i had achieved my goals which was making a ton of money and paying off my car and as soon as i did i was i was like whoa what's next and i kept thinking to myself like this can't just be all like this can't just be it and i started backsliding i made so much money in so little time and just like you i kept i started backsliding i my subconscious mind was not comfortable with being in a place where you've put yourself in a pretty good position now it needs to go back you know what i mean because we don't feel comfortable being at this state and that's where healing and understanding yourself right know thyself really comes into play yeah and i just want to um, add a little quote in there that uh, jeremy has talked about millions and millions of times and it's money flows to those who take care of it and any time that we've lost money and we've done silly things with it it's it's because we weren't caring about it you know i threw my entire portfolio into a company that i've never heard of because my buddy said it's going up you know and that was a big learning lesson uh in terms of my relationship with money as well yeah um and yeah like how you do one thing is how you do everything so x there were a lot of other problems that were happening in my life with relationships and friendships and other things of that sort that all of these problems were showing up in so many different areas and it was like you know god was telling me hey you got you got some stuff to work on <laughs> that's why you know you're not where you're not where you're wanting to be at we've gone over emotional intelligence a lot of i would say a few times now and for the you know, folks that are watching this I, i'm sure that they don't know what emotional what you mean by emotional intelligence so how does that play into making decisions on the stock market and how can someone improve their emotional intelligence yeah um it's definitely it's definitely like i said something that you don't think about mm -hmm. start you don't think about how emotional you'll get when you're investing your hard-earned money into something that you don't really know what will happen in a sense, right? We can have, I could have all, all of my indicators and the chart look beautiful and everything looks great. And there could be news that happens the next day that the company goes bankrupt or whatever it's out of my control. Yeah. But I think, I think one, just in improving your relationship with money is definitely something that I would, you know, journal about. Um, I would definitely journal about how you deal with your emotions now. I feel like some people just innately are better at dealing with their emotions and better at staying in the present and kind of clearing their head. And um, again, I'm just going to like use a, a little sports analogy. Um, I was a big tennis player growing up and I learned that after every point, you know, it's the next point and whatever happened in the past is in the past. I can't change anything. And even if I'm down, uh, love 40, you know, all I have to do is win four points in a row and I'm, you know, we're back to tie, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, I would say that learning the skill of properly meditating, I think a lot of people sleep on meditation being like such a powerful resource um to regulate yourself and to kind of come back to the present um i think that when you start investing you know you start feeling all these emotions and feeling uh yourself getting pulled in all these directions of getting fearful getting greedy getting anxious right that's because you're not in the present moment and you know, if you did your due diligence and if you've done your uh, 
fundamental analysis into these companies that you believe in, then write your plan down, stick to it, and you know, then that starts to take the emotions out of the picture. That that's funny that you mentioned that most people aren't in the present moment. And it's so funny because with investing, it's like you're kind of thinking in a sense like future tense, right? Like what could happen with the stock? That's why you have fundamental analysis, which is where you go into this the 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 company itself and you figure out what their assets are, their 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 cash on hand, their current debt, you know what I mean? Like all these different all the information about them that would play into whether or not you want to invest for this company. So when you when you bring yourself to the present moment, it's not just thinking about what could happen with this investment, but it's also like where are your emotions now? And is it going to affect whether or not you are going to, you know, have control over certain things in your it, it, whether this, you know, investment goes down or not. And there really are things outside of our control that we that we just don't have a say in. And so yeah. when you know when you work on your emotional intelligence, it just adds to your resilience of dealing with this because there's always going to be losses. Yeah. But I've, I heard this in one of the calls that the name of the game is to minimize the amount of losses and just get the most amount of wins that you can that you can possibly get. Yeah. And that's the same for the business journey as well. How fast can you fail, right? <laughs> but not everybody can deal with all those failures those mistakes and even much less learn from them yeah i i just want to make a point on that as well that um if you're someone that's starting your investing journey and if you're just maybe listening into this and you're about to start making your first investment i think that if you start feeling like be honest with yourself if you start feeling scared if you start feeling fear if you start feeling greed what that's telling me is that you're you're putting too much money into this. You're over investing and that's why you're feeling those feelings. If you just put $1 into Tesla, right? And it goes down to zero. Are you going to be feeling fearful? Are you going to be feeling scared? No, it's just a dollar. Yeah. No, it's a piece of gum, you know? It's like are you really going to be worried about that dollar, right? So Everyone has different rules that should be in place uh, when you start investing. And I think one of the biggest rules is learning what you're comfortable as a position size, right? And at the start, it's hard. It's like, you wanna make money fast and it's like, oh, it sucks. I'm just gonna put $10 in. And if it goes up 100%, I'm only gonna make $10. It's like, that's fine, you did it right. You literally did it right. And all you got to do is keep growing in other businesses and keep growing, you know, your income in other ways that you can keep adding to your to your portfolio in a way that you're comfortable with. I remember when you first told me that I was like, I was pretty blown away because I've started my investing journey on crypto. It was on Ethereum and there was just so many, yeah, so many mistakes looking back at it, looking back now that could have been minimized had I you know, just not only one done my due diligence, but also checked myself emotionally and how much I was actually investing, not just financially, but emotionally into this. And everybody wants to look at the numbers, but nobody wants to look at the unseen, which is Mm -hmm. our emotional tie to this investment. And so with that being said, you know, to bring this all back full circle, why should someone who has never invested in their life why should they even invest right now? Yeah, so a couple reasons. One, uh, we're all investors. I think that's a big perspective shift that your viewers, if they're listening to this, like should have is you've invested your time into so many things in your life. Look at the skills and, and everything that you've learned in your life and how much time and effort you put into that and what you've gained from it, right? Um, you everyone innately believes in certain companies whether you like it or not like i love apple for an example i have a macbook i have a ipod i bought all the ipod touches and the uh you know when they first came out and it was like 
a thousand songs on this device and that was like the craziest thing. But if you just bought a share of Apple instead of buying that product, that could have been a hundred to tens of thousands of dollars, you know, over 20 years. And it's like, yeah, okay, 20 years. But we all innately know where the world is going. We all know it, like deep inside of us, if you asked yourself, where is the world going? We see it, the trends are pretty clear. Technology is moving faster than ever at an exponential rate. Mm -hmm. Like it's only gonna get smarter, faster, smaller, mm -hmm. easier to use. I see it as when you invest in, in one of these companies, you're actually becoming a part owner of the company. You know, what does your portfolio look like? Are you proud of the companies in your portfolio, you know? And even if you're just putting a dollar in it just to like pay attention and watch it, you're subconsciously teaching yourself and subconsciously practicing this skill set that once you have the money to make a significant investment that you're comfortable with, then you can take advantage of the next opportunity, of the next crash, of the next bull market on crypto we know that's going to happen maybe not the exact time frame or the date it actually starts right and so that's why i like to each longer term you know give yourself the grace to be patient and wait three to five years for that next bull market to come on and and make sure that you're stacking and you know prepared that uh you know anything can happen yeah everyone is so quick for the your next the next uh, shiny object, right? The next pump and dub, the next crypto coin that's going to pop off. Uh, and that's kind of what I was exposed to in my earlier investing journey. Like I was seeing a whole bunch of people making a ton of money on Dogecoin, Shiba, and I got into that hype and it was like, I learned very quickly. I think, you know, with you sharing your, or actually rather, I believe that with you sharing all this knowledge, it's like, it's moving certain people that have fear around getting into investing or it's like too much that it's not really it's not really as as, as scary as you might think because we all invest like you said like right. it could be money it could be time it could be energy you might as well get something out of it and if you've done your due diligence and you've checked yourself then it is something that can dramatically change your life especially during the time period we're in which is generational wealth type of time frame yeah i also want to give one more quote um from warren buffett yes, who's sir. probably you know the most highly esteemed investor uh, of all time and one of his most famous quotes is that the stock market is a vehicle to flow money from the impatient to the patient mm. that's literally all it is sheesh the fact of the matter is that these markets are always going to be here because as humans, it's like a normal human instinct to feel fear and greed. And that's literally what moves these markets. It's like, why is Bitcoin worth $30,000 right now, right? It's still the same coin that it was when it was $69,000, mm -hmm. right? Tesla is the same company it was when it was at $400 and now it's $100, $180 right the company is still the same badass company that's going to take over the world yeah how many more teslas are you seeing on the roads now and like superchargers and all these things that are popping up right it's like tesla's here to stay and like it's not it's not even a car company they're doing so many other things right so going back to what i was saying it's just like we know where this is going so mm -hmm. it's like it pays to pay attention mm -hmm. facts i remember once that you told me that investing is a gift that you were meant to share with this world. I wanted to ask how you came across this divine guidance. How I like figured out that I had this gift or how I figured out that I want to like share it. Pretty much how you had the gift and wanted to share it. Yeah, I mean, I think that my journey is unique, but at the same sense, like everyone that's listening can do exactly what I'm doing. It's not like I'm some special human that has some secret algorithm to like tell me when to invest i just put in the time and put in the dedication and like i was saying back to the first mastermind group that i was listening to these millionaires you know talk about their stories and their journeys it's like 
they were just obsessed and they stuck with it no matter what happened. And I had many, many failures with investing that I could have given up at any time and said, this is not for me and said, okay, I got to find the next, you know, shiny object. I, I had so many opportunities to do that. And something inside of me just said, you know, keep going, you know, you're getting closer, you know, you're, you're learning as you go. Each, each loss was just rent that I had to pay, you know, dues to pay to, to learn or to learn a lesson or just to be humbled. And I just feel like in these past three years, obviously, like I started, you know, with my 2015 $200 Bitcoin and invested a little bit there. But I feel like when I started taking investing seriously it was 2020, you know, so three years of just deep dedication and and passion of wanting to learn this skill set um, has gotten me to a point where I can identify those opportunities to make money in any market, in any direction. So I'm like fully living in the state of abundance now that I I don't care if I miss a move. I don't care if Bitcoin goes from 30,000 to 60,000 right now. I'm, I'm good. Like, and it's this like really freeing feeling mm. of I'm, I'm never going to feel FOMO again. You know, it's I'm in control of how I manage my money and where I place my money and placing my plan and being smart about it now that it's pretty beautiful that I'm able to do this from my phone. Yeah. Just like all I need is my phone and internet connection and I'm able to bring money into my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people will resonate with that. And I know that a lot of people have this trauma or have these negative connotations to investing because they've never been successful or someone in their life has told them you're never going to be successful or lost their money, you know, doing something silly. So I kind of want to just be like a light in this investing world um, where everyone, everyone that I've seen comes, comes from a different lens of like, I'm going to show you how to make $10,000 in a day, or I'm going to show you how to retire in a month. And it's all about like the ego based of like, how to make the most money and none of those people even if they do make money they're all gonna end up losing it just because they're not doing it from a place of like la they're doing it from a place of lack mm. so yeah i'm trying to flip the script and and <laughs> literally flip the script and like come from a completely opposite direction of like you got everything inside of you already you know, and if you know that for a fact, then you know that abundance is on the way. Mm -hmm. Whether it takes a year, whether it takes five years, whether it takes 10 years, okay, like you're setting yourself, your future self up for success. And if I can help more people to feel that and learn the, the skill set to, to get there, then definitely feeling uh, really fulfilled. Thank you, Jason, for your time and your energy. Um, if you wanted to make any or mention any final things before we kind of uh, wrap it up, any um, plugs that you wanted to do, feel free to uh, do so now. Sure, yeah. Uh, like Mark was saying, uh, you can just follow me on, on Instagram, uh, Twitter. My handle's the same. Uh, Jason Harecki, no spaces. Um, would love to connect with you guys if you want to reach out and send me a DM, like, I'm I'm open public account so I'm happy to talk with you guys through any of this and uh, working also with Jeremy on creating uh, an enlightened investor program to basically teach people to learn that emotional intelligence learn how to heal and then learn you know strategies proven strategies that we've learned over the years that have worked really well for us so we're here to you know hold your hand and and help you to to learn the skill set beautiful uh, my mission and jason's mission is truly just to give back and add value to the world and to be a beacon of light to those that want to pave a different path or go a different way that you know they weren't made aware of and it's out there it's possible you just have to 
nowhere to look. Thank you guys for tuning in. I pray that you all have a blessed rest of your morning, your day, your night, whatever time it may be for you guys. And I will see you all in the next episode. Peace.